Hello and welcome back to the Knights of the Old Republic Let's Play. Last time we were exploring these apartments in the lower city, and today we'll continue to do so and maybe even get to the undercity itself. Now I wanted to mention that for this recording I changed up uh, the audio settings, so perhaps my voice is a little clearer, a little more sultry, a little bit more chocolatey, so to speak. And maybe that's better. I think it's better, but we'll we'll see. We'll see. Um, so let's, uh, without further ado, continue onwards into this doorway over here, where I think there might be a puzzle. And yep, yes there is, there's a puzzle. Now this puzzle is, um, I think it's the one where you have to sort of activate the holograms in order. Uh, let's read through this for a second. Something about explosions, yada yada, twisted Rancor Trio. Um, yep, that sounds right. So there's like holograms of band members, and you have to um, sort of activate them in the order that the band members were join joined the band. And then you can unlock what's inside. I have no idea what's inside. Probably something deliciously good. Uh, so we got to go into this menu here and uh, read the data pad. Um, so what I'll probably do for this part is because I'm going to open up a, a, a notepad because yeah, I'm obviously playing on PC. Open up notepad and as I read this I'll try and uh, keep track of the band members that I see. Uh, that's that's how we used to do it in the old days with pen and paper but you know Windows has a notepad thing that does it just fine. Okay, I, I might just fast forward through this part because this could take a while. And we've got it. Uh, so yeah, I probably I probably would fast forward through that in the video to take a while. Um, so I wrote down the name of the manager first, but I'm not really going to bother to delete him. So we got to figure out the ordering of this. Let's uh, let's pop open the first one. We're looking for the lady Elena, and then the weird guy with the saxophone, Uja, I think his name is. Which one is that? Um, maybe he's in left. Nope, there it is. All right, Karth, please get out of the way. There we go. All right, uh, next one is his bro. There we go, UG. Next one, Lupa. I think he was on the left hand side. Well, yeah, he's on the left. Okay, boom. Next one is this one, and then there's one left, so we'll do that one. Ashana, and boom, the strong box is open. Let's see what's inside. <clears throat> Ooh, a Chani. Uh, that's just some special armor. I'm just going to equip that right now. It is light, has a decent dexterity bonus, and it is upgradable. Uh, you can upgrade things. Um, I'll give Karth my combat suit. What? Not a big deal. Uh, oh, also, something kind of annoying about this game is when characters have low health, they, uh, they sort of limp around. And as you can see, Karth is doing that right now. He's got like a, a limp going. Uh, but you'll see. I'll probably there's, there's like a uh, <clears throat> a person in this area that's kind of difficult to fight. Uh, I don't think it's this one. Well, you are supposed to be able to help that guy, but I failed the persuade check. Let's talk to Karth. Yes, what's on your mind? I guess I did say you could ask me questions later tonight. Is this really necessary? No, no, I don't have a problem with it, really. Go ahead and interrogate me. No, I was just joking, though you do seem to be full of questions. It's rather refreshing, to be honest. Let me ask you something first, though. I've been going through the battle aboard the Endar Spire over and over in my head since we crashed. Some things just don't add up for me. Maybe you could tell me what happened, from your perspective. Neither was I, to tell the truth. I was on board as an advisor for the most part. The battle began so fast it's anyone's guess as to what actually happened. We lost the ship and a lot of good people, and, and for what? On the hope that the Jedi powers would save us somehow? 
Not that Bastila had much of an opportunity to act. We didn't choose that battle anyway. It got forced on us. Hell, I'm, I'm, I'm just as surprised that any of us are alive to talk about it. Come to think of it, it's more than a little surprising that you happen to be here, isn't it? I mean, just what is your position with the Republic fleet anyway? A smuggler? I should have guessed. Now, isn't it odd, however, that a smuggler who was added to the crew at the last minute just happens to be alive? No. Well, maybe. Don't get me wrong, it just seems odd that someone Bastila's party specifically requested a transfer aboard happens to survive. The Jedi requested numerous things when they came on board. I mean, hell, they practically took over the ship, as far as I could tell. Considering your connection to Bastila and the Jedi, whether you know it or not, your presence here seems a little convenient. I'm probably wrong, and this is probably nothing, I know. I learned a long time ago not to take things at face value, however, and I hate surprises. I mean, I have to expect the unexpected, just to be safe. Look, it has nothing to do with you personally. I don't trust anyone, and I have my reasons. And no, I'm not going to discuss them, so can we just keep our mind on more important things? All right, all right. You're pretty damn tenacious. You know that? We'll talk about it, but later. Right now, I just want to get going. Okay, well, we have discovered that Karth has some deep-seated issues trusting people. And has shed some very vague uh, accusations, I guess, towards me. Uh, saying that I was probably not the character that I was presenting myself to be. That's all right. Karth is, I don't know, weird. He's got some weird problems, but we'll, we will see them in due time. Let's head over to the cantina, where I think I just need to talk to some people and uh, we'll find another possible character. Yes, this dude. Go away. One. <laughs> the cutscenes are so hilarious in this game. Gets me every time. Now you can talk to him, and he'll start to do a countdown. One. <laughs> but if uh, you let him get to three, he will murder you. So we're gonna we're gonna back off for now. Anyway, he is the badass bounty hunter, Kalo Nord. Somebody to just remember, I guess. Huh? What? Oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. My attention was kind of focused on the Twi'lek dancers. Look at them waggle those head tails. I don't normally go for these alien girls, but I've had some bad experiences with my own species lately. Maybe it's time for a change. You know what I mean? I don't want to waste my time answering a bunch of questions. I'm here to have a few drinks, watch the dancing girls, and enjoy myself. I've got to be mentally ready. Davik's got an assignment for me off planet as soon as the quarantine ends. I'm one of his top couriers. Davik's always sending me off planet to deliver and bring back packages. He knows he can trust me to follow my orders to the letter. Plus, I used to be an intergalactic customs agent, so I know all the tricks they use to catch smugglers. That gives me the edge I need on my courier runs. It's not like it's some big secret. It's kind of hard for Davik to keep a low profile when he belongs to a big intergalactic crime syndicate like the Exchange. Davik's ship is the fastest one in the entire quadrant. But even the Ebonhawk can't get off Taurus until the quarantine is lifted. The Sith fleet has the planet surrounded. Any ship leaving orbit without proper access codes will be disintegrated by the Sith auto-targeting laser cannons. 
And those codes are locked safely away in the military base. Davik's pretty upset about it. His smuggling operation isn't making any money. But even with his underworld connections, he can't get his hands on those codes. Fine by me. That means I get to go back to enjoying the dancing girls. There's some subplot with this dude where you're supposed to be able to pay off a bounty. But I think that you have to talk to somebody beforehand, and I missed the persuade check, so it's not a big deal. Leave me alone. So give me some space, bug eye. Your breath smells like bantha poodoo. Who you calling little girl, tuba face? Just a sec, boys. Sawbar, a little help here? I need you to rip the legs off some insects. <laughs> Quit complaining. You can finish eating later. Besides, you need the exercise, so get over here. <laughs> you got a problem with me? Then you got a problem with Big Z. So unless you want to take on my furry friend, I suggest you greenies hop on out of here. <laughs> Say, I don't recognize you, and I know pretty much everyone in the lower city. You must be new down here. I guess that makes me and Big Z your official welcoming committee. It's not that strange. Most aliens can speak basic, they just prefer to use their own language. But I grew up here on Terra, so I just sort of got used to speaking the native tongue. You showed a lot of guts dealing with those Valkyrs, kid. You got a name? My name's Mission Veo, and this big Wookiee is my best friend Zalbar. I'd offer to give you a tour, but the streets down here aren't safe. But if there's anything else you need... You going? Yeah, this dive is pretty boring. No action around here. Come on, Big Z, let's go. <laughs> Can't you think about something besides your stomach five minutes? Come on. We'll go see if there's anything good to eat at the Beck base. So that's a mission in Zalbar. You gotta, I think, trigger that cutscene before you can get on to the next part because it would be really weird and awkward if you hadn't seen them and you somehow got to the next part. Anyway, over here is a, a young dancing Twi'lek or Twi'lek. Uh, this part is just funny, so I'm just, I'm just gonna let you enjoy this part. Mana mana tota hakuji krala bolaji tinku ukaba kin tonshi kakichin awana wamata ni randi ichawa tongbola johnny tako justak miki grabu moko wenda tiho tonga kenchopa chawi tichop twis yun kun watu yama bona na kachu kicha badwang wanga kum So there's basically no reason to do that other than the paltry amount of experience you get. And the silly, silly dancing animation. 
I can't see anything wrong with getting rid of people like that. As long as we don't end up on the list of your victims. Okay, I don't know about Davik's special contracts. Justice is one thing, but do it. That's Zax. He's a bounty guy, so you can go do some bounties. Most or some of the bounties that you do for him are dark side point only, and some of them are you can resolve them in light side ways. So I'm gonna try and do some light side point resolving stuff here. <clears throat> and I think we're gonna head over to the hidden back base, but uh, uh, Karth is really irritating me, so I'm actually going to just give him a med pack now, sure. so that he stops limping around like an idiot. And here we go. Hey, you can't just walk in here. This is the hidden back base. How do I know you're not a Volker spy sent to kill Gad on Thek? A lot of people want to go inside and speak to Gadon. He's a hero of the common folk. But the days of the Hidden Beck's open door policy are gone. Between the Sith conquest and the Valkyrie gang war, Gadon has more enemies than he used to. We're being careful about who we let in now. Well, we do need all. Besides, it's not like you can do anything to harm Gadon in the. Go in and speak to Gadon if you want. Apparently, there's just no purpose for that character. She stops you and says you can't go into the base, and then says, eh, you can go into the base. It's not like you can do anything. It's not like I have a purpose at all. <laughs> I think it's just it functions as a way to, uh... Hold it right there. Who are you? Oh, gosh. What is your business with Gadden? Calm down, Zandra. Sort of know no, that it's heavily guarded. Here in the middle of our own base. It would be a suicide mission. You're too trusting, Gadden. Breshek and his Vulkers want you dead. Anyone we don't know is a potential threat, and it's my job to make sure you're safe. Do you want us to start attacking strangers on sight, Zerdra? Like the Vulcas do? I will never let it come to that. Now step aside and let them pass. As you wish. You can speak to Gadden if you want, but I've got my eye on you. You try anything and you'll be vaporized before you can say Vulcar spy. You'll have to forgive, Zerdra. Ever since Brezhik and the Vulkers began this war against us, she's been a little overzealous in her security duties. The problems with the Sith haven't helped things. Zerdra seems to forget that I know how to look after myself. Now, how can I help you? The escape pods? You know, I heard the Sith have been asking around the upper city about them as well. But you don't look like you're with the Sith. They might be spies, Gadden. They might be working for the Sith. Calm down, Zerdra. If the Sith thought we knew anything useful, they'd have a battalion of troops kicking down our door. No, I think this offworlder has his own agenda. I suppose I could tell you what I know. It's not like it could do any harm to me or my gang. But it might cause problems for the Vulcas, and that's okay in my book. The Vulcas stripped those pods clean within hours after they landed. It's too bad we didn't get there first, considering what my spies reported the Vulcas found. A female Republic officer named Bastila survived the crash. We Becks don't believe in intergalactic slavery, but the Vulcas aren't so picky. They took a prisoner. Normally, the Vulcas would take a captured slave and sell them for a nice profit to Davik, or an off-world slaver. But a Republic officer is no ordinary catch. I still think Bastila is just a Republic officer. That could work to our advantage. Maybe she'll even figure out a way to escape from the Vulcar base on her own. She's too valuable to leave with the Vulcar scum at the base. Brezhik's probably got your Republic friend hidden away somewhere safe until the big swoop race. You'll never find her. I'm afraid your friend has become a pawn in Brezhik's game to take over the lower city. He's offered her up as the Vulcar's share of the prize in the annual swoop gang race. By putting up such a valuable prize, Brezhik hopes to win the loyalty of some of the smaller gangs. Their numbers will allow him to finally destroy me and my followers. So how do you propose we go about rescuing Bastila then? Well, we can't fight all the gangs. The only hope you have of rescuing Bastila is to somehow win the big season opener of the swoop race. I might be able to help you with this. If you'd be willing to help us. We both have something to gain here. And much to lose. The swoop race is for the lower city gangs only. I could sponsor you as a rider for the Hiddenbecks this year. 
If you win the race, you will win your friend's freedom. But first, you have to do something for me. My mechanics have developed an accelerator for a swoop engine. A bike with the accelerator installed can beat any other swoop out there. But the Vulkers stole the prototype from us. They plan to use it to guarantee a victory in this year's swoop race. I need you to break into their base and steal it back. Getting into the Volker base won't be easy. The front doors are locked tight. But I know someone who might be able to get you in the back way. Mission Veil. Vale. Mission? Gaddon, you can't be serious. She's just a kid. How is she supposed to help them with this? Mission's explored every step of every back alley in the lower city. Plus, she knows the undercity sewers better than anyone. If anyone can get inside the Volker base, it's her. She and her Wookiee friend Zalbar are always looking to stir up a little excitement. They like to go exploring in the Undercity, despite the danger. Your best bet is to look for her in the Undercity. But you'll need some way past the sit guard post at the elevator. A simple disguise might have worked on the Upper City card. But the security down here is much tougher. You'll need the proper papers to get past it. Luckily, my gang ambushed one of the Sith patrols headed down to the Undercity. They never made it, and their security papers fell into my hands. Since we're working together now, I suppose I could give them to you in exchange for your uniforms. With the security papers, you won't need a disguise anyway. Good choice. Thanks for the uniforms. You won't need them with these security papers anyway. Now, is there anything else I can do for you? I suggest you hurry. The swoop race is coming up, and we want you to have time to practice before the race. Oof, I forgot how long that dialogue sequence is. Uh, the hidden back base doesn't really contain anything if you're doing light side point stuff, so I'm gonna walk in here, grab something from this play steel cylinder, and leave, and hopefully never return, or return only once. Maybe it's only one time. I think I have to go back one time, unfortunately. Hidden backs are just, uh, you know, a faction down here. There's two factions. There's, like, the good faction and the bad faction, but... That guy's crafty, so he's trying to use me to do things for him. But he did give me some Sith papers. Uh, now there are some units and uh, players back here. But let's try and take them down. Should be pretty simple. These are Black Volkers. Down in the lower city, Black Volkers just attack you on site. Apparently it's that bad. Dangerous place to live. Uh, we're doing a lot of missing right now, and car's pretty low, so this might get a little easy. Uh, gonna use a med pack here. Oh, rip cart. Okay. Well, not exactly how I wanted that to go down, but I guess we can take this, the rest of this with one character. Ah, uh, yep, that's fine. Waste of a med pack earlier on car. He should have just. You guys are behind with your payments. What do you, uh, you think just because you're in some gang, you don't have to give Davik his cut? Ah, so you want to play this the hard way. <laughs> okay. Tunipudu! I knew you boys would see reason. Now get out of here. Too bad. I was looking forward to cracking some heads. Maybe next time, Candrus. I better get this over to Davik. I'll call you if anyone else gets behind on their payments. Most people who play this game think Candrus is a pretty cool character. Um, but I just like him because his name is cool. His name is Candrus. Weird, man. It's like a word, Candor, in, like, us. Anyway, here's badass bounty hunter Kalo Nord once more. He needs two introductions. Here's a bounty on your little green heads. I'm here to collect. That's the plan. Gives me the stare down and walks away. So, so great. <laughs> uh -huh. Alright, so I'm going to heal Karth here because there's some combat in this area. And I, I guess I need him, so I don't want him to die. We'll save too because otherwise might get stuck into some T-Rubble. 
Yes. And let's continue to walk in this area. I know there's a bounty in this area, and I want to make sure that I like save before that point because otherwise it might be difficult. Anyway, and there's more black volkers down this area, and since we're still pretty darn weak, actually, I'm gonna be doing a lot of missing, and missing is pretty lame. But eventually, I'll get the second set of two weapon fighting, and everything will be so much better. Let's head into here. Up, oh, yep, more black bookers. What do you know? What do you know? Uh, Car's sort of derping around in the back, so I'm, I kind of want him to take as much damage as possible because he has the higher health pool. Uh, well, that guy used an energy shield. Kind of irritating when you're fighting against energy shield. And you're using box pistol only because it just absorbs a flat amount of damage, and you just have to blow through it. So we actually took a lot of damage in there. So Car's slow. I'm kind of low. But we got plenty of med packs. You know, stuff to loot. And I think you can loot more med packs here. And I th oh, I guess there are some Volkers in the back there. And I might need to do this with only my character. Well, all right. So grenades, Grenade City. He has an energy shield too. Well, there's an example of the game thinking you don't have line of sight and you have to run all the way up to the character. But no big deal. Nothing a little grenading can't handle. Car should get up. There he is. Oh, good. Karth leveled up, so that should give him a full heal. Uh, we'll pick up this frag mine. I'd like to pick it up so I can sell it. I think I have some demolition skills, uh, but oh, I guess my skill is too low to pick up frag mines. You can sell them. They don't sell for that much, so it's really not a big deal. So we'll just disable it. Get open to this footlocker. Oh, there's some med packs and some repair parts. What? Decent. Let's level up Karth. Um, Skills, he's a soldier, so soldiers only get treat injury, and I think I might be doing either the blaster pistol. Oh, he already has full blaster pistol, so conditioning for saving throw stuff is definitely the way to do it. And he should be at full health. Sure. Wonderful. Don't have to waste any more med packs on him. <laughs> Did I lit this already? I don't remember. Oh, no, I didn't. Cool. Let us continue onwards through these apartments. This is basically just exactly the same as the upper apartments, except for their darker in color. They're not white anymore. I'm gonna take out all these black volkers who just inexplicably like to use swords. Some of them are martial arts masters too. Easy peasy. Let's take a look inside this locker. Some more loots and stuff. Cool. Cool. More remains. That guy has. Frag grenade. Nice. I think I have like 13, 12, some ludicrous number of frag grenades. Uh, oh, there's a mine in there. Oh, I actually, you know what? This is annoying me. I don't really want the game to pause when I have a mine selected, so I'm going to unpause that. And this looks like a side quest. Can I recover the gas mine? I think it's a different value for recovering stuff. Nope, can't. Although I could just walk through it. Gas mines don't really do that much damage. Although I don't have an antidote for poison. So let's see. Um, I think you're supposed to just read this message. And then the if you interact with the box, it will ask you questions about your life that are conveniently all inside of this message. So I'm just going to skim through this. Blah, blah, blah. Should be able to do this, no problem. This one's easier than the other side quest. Property of Elamatic. Hyperdrive was the name of his doge. Who taught you? Uncle, I think. Uh, family came from Alderan. Alderaan. <laughs> wow, that was fantastic. It's like bank uh, questions. Questions like for your getting into your bank account. But you would also require a password usually too. So let's put on some energy shields because, as we can see from previous encounters, they're annoying to deal with. And if we can have some, then we can be annoying to the computer. It's a real thing, trust me. We'll take out these guys over here. Don't really want to waste a grenade because I shouldn't need to. Go, and now he sort of derped up to me there. That's fine. Everything is going my way. Good work, team. I think we are approaching the place that has, there's like an assassin lady hiding out here, and she is a bit difficult to fight, so uh, 
hopefully she's it's not in here. Oh, yep, yes, she is. I want to say before I hit this up. There we go. I die a lot in this fight if, if you're not prepared for it. You want to be able to, you want to be full health. You want to have energy shields rolling because she can one shot you. Or I'll give you a blaster shot right between the eyes. Now, what are you doing here? You're a fool if you think you can collect the price on my head. Now you'll see why I'm the most dangerous assassin on Taris. All right, difficult engagement. Uh, so let's pop on those energy shields that should protect us from a lot of stuff. Well, she knocked me right in the noggin and I think disabled my energy shield, so sure. great. Oh, no, it's still active. It's, we're good. It's still active. Uh, we're going to de-equip one blaster so I can hit her more often. Karth already has double two-weapon fighting, so it's really not that big of a penalty. Hopefully we get this fight over with no problem. My characters are losing health pretty rapidly. Oh my goodness. Eating so much damage. Come on, baby. You got to hit. Come on, Karth. That's going to be pretty close. Is Karth going to go down here? Oh, I think he's locked into a fight, so I can't use a med pack. Oh, no, we're good. He used it. Take her down, Karth. Sure. Oh, my gosh. You missed everything. He's really close to dying, so am I. Man, one med pack for me just lights up everything. Okay, we're good. Easy. Easy game. Easy game. Got to be really on top of the healing in that fight, otherwise both your characters can die simply. Um, there's like there's a weird thing where if you're already in the middle of an attack and you use a heal command, your character has to finish the attack before they can heal, um, and it's kind of weirdly ambiguous. And I forgot, I totally forgot about this, but um, apparently you can uh, like teleport back to your hideout and heal, but you can't do it in this area. So uh, I won't. I guess I won't use med packs to heal anymore. I, I totally forgot you could do that. It's like the transit system or whatever. You should be able to take out this fight, no problem, as long as Karth doesn't die. I re equip the second blaster pistol because I unequipped the Selvin fight. Cool. There's only one guy in there. Easy to mop up. We're picking up loads of med packs, too. That's pretty great. And this is the way out, I think. Oh, I guess I didn't loot these remains. That's, that's fine. That's cool. No big deal. And I think once I step out here, we'll transit back, we'll heal Karth. There we go. For the longest time, I didn't even know you could do this, but you can. And I am now going to abuse it. I can't believe I forgot about this. I read about it, and it was like, oh, how broken. Anyway, let's head down to this direction. Um, where some Volkers are guarding the entrance, I guess. Karth running ahead. There's, they have like some of them. Some of them have this thing called a shock stick, uh, and all it does is it has sort of a 25%, I think, chance of if it hits, it will stun you. But I mean, like the chance of them hitting is already 25%, so it's 25 times 25, so it's really, really tiny uh, probability of hitting. Uh, if you don't have the Sith papers, you can't get past this part. But luckily, we have them. Sweet. And let's go down into the trash heap of Undercity. I think you get approached, right, as soon as you get down here. Yup. You there, Upworlder. Anyone using this elevator has to pay the toll. Yeah, this is our elevator. If you use it, you gotta give us something. I don't believe this planet. Even the beggars are trying to shake us down. Five credits. That's what it costs to use our elevator. Five credits. <laughs> credits, my brother. We have credits. Now we can buy food and medicine. Hush, or the others will hear us. They'll want our credits. We have to hide them. Go on, you two. Get out of here. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Those two beggars give everyone in the village a bad name. We aren't all like that, you know. Most of us are good people. 
I'm sure you are, miss. It's just too bad your little welcoming committee is here to give people a bad first impression. My name is Shalina. You're from the Upworld, aren't you? I've... I've never seen it. I was born here in the Undercity. Is it as nice as they say up there? I've never been to the surface, but sometimes I think I can see it in my dreams. The sun, the sky, the stars. It all sounds so... so... so wonderful. Gendar, the leader of our village, tells me I should spend more time trying to improve things down here and less time dreaming about something I can never have. Maybe he's right. You probably think I'm a fool, having dreams of a place I've never even seen. But when I was little, Rukil used to tell me stories of what it was like up there. Rukil's the oldest man in the village. The kids call him Rukil Wrinkleskin, but he's a kind man. He used to tell me the greatest stories when I was a little girl. I still like to listen to his tales about the Promised Land, even though I know they're just legends, but it helps to make the Undercity seem less... less dark somehow. It's... it's just a story to make little children smile. Rukil believes in it, though. Sometimes I can almost believe it myself, but then I look around and see the ugly truth. I guess we have to make the best of what we have, though. If you really want to learn more about the Promised Land, you should speak to Rukil. Oh, okay. Well, if you ever need anything, or if you just feel like talking, come back and see me. I hardly ever get a chance to speak to <clears> So, Shalene is important for some side quests that I'm not planning on doing, but unfortunately, that is going to wrap up the episode. Um, so, I'm going to end it right here. Hope you enjoyed it. See you on the next one.